Hi everybody. What I got here in front of me today is a Magnavox Odyssey. What's it? Let's see. It's called exactly what it is. An Odyssey microprocessor, an Odyssey 2 microprocessor from Magnavox. It was a console that came out in the 70s. I got two actually. That I got bare bones cheap on eBay, not working, untested, blah, blah, blah. And I got them, and they didn't come with power supplies. Well, I take that back. One did come with a power supply that was taped up and rubber banded together, and <laughs> I took a chance and plugged it in, and there was nothing coming out of it. So, untested. <laughs> Um, I realized after talking to a few people that this used the same power supply as an NES, which I had coming. So I was able to use that, and unbelievably, they both work perfect. And one of the orders also came with seven cartridges. We got some random ones that I dropped. We got Speedway, Casino Slot, Casey Munchkin, which is kind of cute. Uh, Thunderball, no clue. Looks like it might be pinball. Showdown in 2100. Uh, okay. Stark Man. And Blockout Breakdown. Obviously Pong or something of that nature. But the reason why I got these is because these are going to be used in the gallery. If you're not aware of it, the gallery that we're setting up, the Retro Game Gallery, is going to be a combination museum slash retro game store here on the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania and East Palestine, where not only could you come and buy old video games, but you can also play old video games. Currently, right now, I have ColecoVision, Atari 2600, Odyssey 2, and Television, and NES. And that is one room. The second room, I still have to load up with other consoles slash Older 8-bit computers, maybe even some PCs, and maybe I, I might take an old, uh, I'm a really good system from 2000 or about the PC, but dumb it down and make it just run DOS VGA games. I might do that. But anyways, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these apart, well, I'm going to take one of them apart, and just clean them up, take a good look at them, just see what they look like inside. Since they already work, I don't have to do too much to them. I just want to clean them up and get them ready. And this one right here has some scratches on it, but both joysticks have the little tabs on the top, which probably come off. This one doesn't appear to have scratches on it, but it's missing the cover, so here. So I'm going to take them apart. I'm going to clean them up, and I'll take the best looking one, and it'll go in the room with the rest. And the other one will go up on the shelf. So let's take a look at what they look like inside. Okay? Before I do that, be sure to like and subscribe. So here we go. This is the Magnavox Odyssey, or the Odyssey 2 microprocessor. I don't know why they went with all the crazy names on it. This one, as I said, has a lot of scratches on it. So I'll take this one apart, clean it up first, and then I'll do the other one off camera, and then I'll just decide which one I want to use on the screen. So to take this thing apart from while I was just doing a brief look at it just now, it appears that it is held together by three, I would almost want to say bolts. It's not a little screwdriver or anything like that. So let me just jump over here in my tools and I'm going to just grab out a nut driver, which just happens to have a quarter inch slot in the top, or a hole on the top that I can just get this. So let's just see what we got here to work with. Do I have a, I don't have a free, nope. I was looking to see if I had a container for my nuts and bolts, but I don't, so I'm just going to have to use that there for now. I left the other one holding all the nuts and bolts from a different system I'm working on. So let's see, we got those three right there to take it off. 
It's got some interesting stickers on the bottom. I have no idea what that one is. I mean, it might be a construction sticker. That could be the serial number for all I know. So that's what we got there. Now, how does this thing come apart? All right, so this looks like, oh, I see, never mind, I should have left it like that, because the bottom, nothing's attached to the bottom, it's all attached to the top, so we got that big old empty there. All right, sorry for the little jump there. According to the battery, when I first turned it on, it said it was fully charged, and yet, within a few seconds of using it, it was dead. So here we go. We're inside this system now, and it's kind of interesting the way it's hooked up. I mean, so, again, everything's being held in with these little not uh, these little bolts or screws without Phillips heads on them now it's fascinating it has a channel 3 and 4 selector here do we have a hole on the bottom to get to that no see there's no way to get to that on the bottom so you're stuck with channel 4 or 3 unless you get inside and open it up and turn it to channel 3 was that in the manual? It might have been. So let's just see. Let's just continue on and see what it takes. Oh, okay, that one's loose. What's holding us in place? Be very careful when I'm taking this apart. Okay, we have. I'm just. I'm not gonna like pull this apart and fix it because obviously it's not broken. But I just want to take a good look at what we got here without doing any kind of damage to it. We have these right here. These are the controllers. They plug into here. So you can't take the controller out or unplug the controller and switch it unless you open it up. Which is not that hard because once you take it open, you just pop it out. So it's not hardwired in. I do like this. It's kind of fascinating though, the channel 3 and 4 like that inside. And then we have a keyboard connector over here which is a membrane, so I'm not going to pull that thing loose. Then in here we have main chips that are on sockets. What chips do we have in here? We have something from Intel. And then something else. I can't read it from here. It's hard to get in there. I should pull it apart, but I don't want to because it works. And I don't know the system very well, so I don't want to take it apart. But I did want to look inside and see if there was nothing in here. I didn't want to, as I said with the Atari system, I did not want to have a system out there on the counter for visitors, a.k.a. children, because that's mainly who I expect to come in here and learn how these old systems work. I don't want them to come here and start playing with a system that may have spiders in them, bugs, black widows, tarantulas, I don't know, aliens. We're just dirty. So yeah, I pulled it apart and wanted to make sure it was clean inside. And this is definitely very clean inside. So it's mainly just an outside cleanup. And those, I'll take those apart next. So let me just put this back on here. It is really fascinating about that. I, I, if anybody knows, please let me know in the comment. Does the manual, which I don't have the manual. I probably could find it online, but I've been known to not read the manual. But if anybody knows, did the Magnavox Odyssey 2, did the manual tell you to use channel 4, you must remove the bottom cover and change the channel. I'm kind of curious if it did say that. So let's just put this back on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open one of the joysticks. I just want to get a look at what they're like inside. Explore new worlds. Have to explore, um, you know what I mean, the Star Trek book. New worlds, whatever. I, I was watching it all weekend and I still don't remember. I watched the Strange New Worlds. Explore Strange New Worlds. Anyways, um, I was watching it all weekend and it's fascinating. I binge watched it. I only have two episodes left and I'm completely caught up. I'm also watching another show. I mean, you guys want to hear me while I'm untangling stuff here. I'm also watching another show, maybe way far. It's called The Extraordinary Attorney. It's a show out of South Korea that's on Netflix. And it's a show about a girl or a lady, a woman, with autism who also becomes an attorney. And it's 
a very good show. Very fascinating to watch. I I, I kind of like how the Koreans do their TV shows different than we do over here. There's no laugh tracks for that matter, which is nice. I hate that canned laughter. But it, it's just really fascinating how it's, the show is. So, okay, now we're going to go on this one here. Uh, it's got some screws on it, so I'll just get a screwdriver out. I just want to take a look at the inside of one of these. If I'm doing something wrong, I shall find out real soon now. I? I don't know what that is. I'll find out. It looks like he's held together with dry, drywall screws. See that? Hmm. Another time period they did things differently than here, than we do now. And also, it's 50 years old almost, and it works. Whereas stuff that you buy now, next year, won't work. There we go. So what we got in there? Okay, we got that. Oh, this is really, really simple. Oh, 1981. October 5th, 1981, this was made, so it's not that old. This is really simple. You have a membrane. When you push down the button, it touches that there, so that sets that. Then you have a joystick that, when you push down in certain spots, it makes contact on the membrane in different places. I'm assuming we have, what, four cardinal points on here? North, south, east, west, and it picks them up, and it picks up like the in betweens too. I'm gonna assume. Kind of fascinating. It almost looks like it, they were hand drawn traces, not done by computer. You know what I mean? When they, they did the prototypes, they hand drawn them, and then nobody went back in and fixed them up, made them look pretty with a computer or with any kind of computer design or anything else that would have made them straight lines instead of curved lines that aren't the same thickness all the way around. Alright, so that is relatively clean inside. You could use a little cleaning right here. And that too. Alright, so I'm, actually I'm going to clean this off from the outside. Now, how does this come off? Is that what this thing is? Is this, this a lock? Might be. Might not be. I don't know. Or does it unscrew? Might. Might not. Can't tell. I think it's unscrewing. Let's see what we get here. No? This is, let me just verify. I'm going to screw it back in and see if it tightens up. Now, that makes no sense to be unscrewed. Okay, so I guess it doesn't screw and unscrew. So I have to clean it the way it is. Let me just wipe that off before I close it up. Get out the old glass cleaner, aka Windex. Let's wipe this down here real fast. I don't want to spray it and get everything all wet. Somebody complained in my last video. Oh, you're going to get Windex in the little foam pads and it's going to ruin them. Uh, well, that system I was working on was 40 plus years old. I think at this point, a little Windex in the foam pads is the least of its worries. But I understood what he was calling for. Or she, or whoever it was that complained. I understand where they were coming from. So, I shall try not to get Windex inside the phone pads. There is none in here, but I get the point. But what I'm doing is just wiping these down. Again, as I have said a number of times, I'm mainly cleaning these up because children eventually will be touching them. And as a parent of a two and a half year old, well, as a parent of seven children, who range from 36 to two and a half with a 21 year gap in between the two and a half and the other ones. I would like to have things be clean so that my kids don't pick up grubbies, and get all cooties. But you know what I mean? You know how kids are. They touch something, next thing you know, their hands in their mouth, and you're wondering why they get sick. It's because of that. They don't understand. Children take a while to be trained or taught. All right, so that's clean enough for this moment here. I never did look up at the camera, so if you didn't see any of that, I do apologize. I will do my best to make sure this one stays in camera. So again, I'm going to open this one up and take a look at this one. Two screws makes it easy. This is much easier to pull apart than the ColecoVision controllers, which suck. 
I really can't get past the noise of a ColecoVision controller. If you've never used one here, it sounds like it's falling apart when you move the controller. It's, you hear the, how quiet that is? Well, it makes a little noise, but not much. ColecoVision controller clicks, clacks, and every, every one of them does it. It's not like it's just a broken one. Everyone does it. So this one right here was made on October 7th, 1981. So this one was made two days after the other one. I didn't notice, and maybe I'll notice when I go back to editing, but I didn't notice that there was a date stamp inside the system. That would have told me when it was made. Hey, wait. Oh, it's PCB. I thought I, I saw those little things and I thought, is that like integrated circuits here? But no, this is... All this thing is doing, and it's kind of funny, or not funny, but fascinating, cute in a way, is this wires are connecting to the membrane. It's doing nothing else. There is not a single thing on this thing other than membranes making contact. So this could be readily and easily replaced. I'm positive. Well, not positive. Sure, this could easily be replaced with an Atari joystick or any of the 2600 standard style joysticks, which I may end up having to do with the with the um, gallery, I may end up just replacing the controllers. I don't know. My thought was I'd like, I want to leave the uh, chintzy, hard to use controllers the way they were so that you get the full feel of how the systems work. Like, for instance, the ColecoVision or the Intellivision with the little round disc thing. Nobody's ever complained about that, but I hate those things. But I'm pretty sure somebody's made a better version of it. I got a text message. So this is what we got there. I'm going to put this back together. And then we'll clean off the outside of the case there. Let me screw this back on. Wipe this down. Yeah, like, why do you take this apart? Well, this right here is a learning experience for me. This is the first time I've ever taken apart and looked at the inside of an Odyssey 2. So, it's all learning experience. I've never seen them. Now i got an idea of how they work inside. If they don't work for one reason or another, I know what's inside and gives me an idea of whether it's fixable or not. Like in these right here, and probably the easiest way to fix them would be with just the, um, the, what do you call it, the conductive ink. And just draw new traces if necessary, if you can't clean up what's there. Okay, now we're going to take this. And I'm just going to give this a nice clean up. Again, like I said, these scratches, I can't replace those gouges. I gotta try and, I don't, I, actually, I don't even know how I can test these. Maybe there's a program out there that uses a keyboard. From what I heard is the keyboard is totally useless. It is not used by anybody. Which is, I mean, obviously it's an ugly keyboard. Well, I take that back. It's not an ugly keyboard. If you go back to when this was made, well, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, having a keyboard would have been awesome. But it's a membrane keyboard. A very minimal rimbang keyboard. Enter is up here next to reset. Oh God, dang! Oh, imagine this. Imagine this. You're 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 young. You're you're you got little stubby fingers. You're fourteen thereabouts, and you got some way of coding. You got a basic cartridge in here, and you're typing away. And I don't know where you can save it to, but you're typing away, and you're did, 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 ten. Hello world. Twenty. Go to ten. Run. Every time you hit enter, when you type something, you hit enter, but oh, I hit reset. Is that a design flaw? I seriously freaking think so. What the hell? Clear, I'm assuming, is a backspace. That's almost as bad as the Time Mission Clear 1000 with its backspace and everything being next to the enter. But a reset key next to the enter key? Whose brain needs to be slapped awake? God damn. Seriously? Who does that? Who does things like that? I'll tell you who does things like that. People who've never used computers before in their lives. Other than to look at them and say, we can get rich. That is sad. That is, that, um, yeah, that that's a very sad thing. If you own a Magnavox Odyssey 2, and you got some horror story about that reset button being next to the enter key, let me know. Odds are, because from what I heard, the keyboard is never used, odds are, and I think it's also a video pack, is also the same thing as this one. But, as I keep digressing, um, odds are there was never software that actually took advantage of the keyboard and let you type. So maybe it didn't matter. But I still think that's the stupidest design concept. 
especially if you had thoughts of this keyboard is going to be used in the future by somebody, anybody. I mean, even if you're just using it to type in your name, high score, type in your name, and you're typing in your name, M-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I. hit enter when done, hit, oh, I hit reset, my high score is gone, dumb. All right, so, anywho, that has been cleaned, now, I'm going to pause, I'm going to go get the other one, and we're going to do that one too, I'm just going to look inside it real quick, and clean the outside, just like I did this one, and then I'm going to show you how it works. All right, so here's the other one, and as I said, this one worked too. I tested them both, and they both worked, which was really nice, and yeah, I tested by just shoving it in the hole and holding the ground wire on there. It worked. But this one is filthy as hell, heck. It's got a different sticker on the back, where the other one just had a, like a label. I'm not going to pull this one apart right now because it's filthy. I know it works. I'll just shut this on my shelf and I'll keep this one as a backup just in case. So this one I'm just going to stick on my shelf. And I'm going to bring the other one back in here and I'm going to plug it into the Telebox. Or maybe I, actually, you know what, I'll plug it into the other television in the studio. And I just want to show you that it works. So let's go to the studio. Follow me. All right, so we're back here in the studio. And initially, I had plugged this right here into the monitor behind me for the TV. But it seems to have a hard time locking on the signal. It would come up saying select game, then go away. It can't lock on this. So I had to break out the old CRT right here and hook it into it. So let's turn it on. I got Casey Munchkin in here. Let's see how she works. It comes up, select game. A little RF noise. I'm not too worried about that right now. So I'm assuming select game is like press a number. There we go. And let's die. So this is like a form of Pac-Man, which I'm not that good at. Or I should say maybe it's like a form of Crazy Chicken Jr., which I'm very good at. So, I'm going to shut that off there. I'm going to just, I just want to check out these various cartridges and see what they got there. So, that was Casey Munchkin. This one is Casino Slot Machine. I wonder what that is. It's always select game. Oh, it's just slots, huh? Uh, one player. Uh, how much do I want to bet? Um, I don't know how much I want to bet. Okay, 10 cents is good. And I guess you can't bet 10 cents what? Come on. Uh, yeah, you give away the blinkings. You go away. All right, so how do we make this thing go? Space. Keys. Other joystick. No clue. Reset does get you back there, so let's go. Select game. Player one, two, three, four. No clue. Hey, that, that right there is casino slot machine. Oh, I just realized it, it says on the cartridge, press zero, enter number of players. Let's we'll try that again. Zero, enter number of players, one. Okay, so I was doing it right there. That's player one. You can only bend 10 cents at a time? That's relatively dumb. Okay. Out you go. These cartridges are kind of interesting. If you look at them, they have like a little design to them that lets you stack them so they don't slide all over the place. You ever drop a bunch of Atari 2600 cartridges? They's messy. So, Speedway, press one. Spin out, press two or three. Crypto Logic, press four. Is that like Bitcoin? I've done, I've done it. So, Speedway's press one. <gasps> Ooh, this is skill one or two. Uh, one's good enough. And this uses the other joystick. Why? Why? 
Okay, it's actually playable. Okay, here we go. Reset. Two or three for spin out. Skill level one. Oh, this is my. Oh, don't. <laughs> Okay. Crypto Logic four. Ooh, this looks good. This looks challenging. Does this use a keyboard? Ooh, you can type. Look at this. I can type. Oh god. Look, I can type stuff. Well, then let me here. Let me type in. I did a D. D, hello world, enter. Oh, I see. Woo, it scrambles my letters up. Isn't that awesome? Yes. No. Uh, okay. Nice to know the keyboard works. On to the next exciting game. Block out and break down. Press zero and then press one or press zero and press two. Okay, so I'm gonna press zero either way. Turn it on. Press one. I suck. Well, the angle is not easy. Okay, that's nice. Let's see what this one. Zero and then press two. This is breakdown. Is it the same thing? Oh, I see. Okay. I'd buy that for a dollar. Cosmic Conflict, press one. All right. Now we're doing it. This is like a space game. I pressed one. I pressed one. Play. Enter. Keys. Other joystick. Okay, we'll try it again. Hey. Now it's possible these joysticks are, or these cartridges are dirty too. Select game. I'm gonna press one. Oh, okay. Ooh, ooh, what we got here? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, look at this. Look at look at diggity. Look at this. This is like Tail Gunner or whatever game. Oh, this is elite. This is elite for the Magnavox. That's what this is. Oh, I hate I hate controllers that go backwards. Can I shoot one? Come on, come on, get up there. I missed him. Yeah, alert, I know. So that, that one actually has a little bit of potential there. Showdown in 2100 AD. And now, is this gonna be a space game or is this gonna be a Western? They all start out with select game. It's a Western. Ooh. Ooh, it's like comp. This beats the heck out of the um, Western game on the 2600. You actually have a hat. <laughs> I think. What, what do you what, 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 My bullets bounce off the trees? Come on. Yeah, see, the bullets bounce off the trees. Did he just shoot himself? I think he did. All right. You think by 2100 they'd be doing more. See, I, I should have looked at it because the cartridge does show you guys shooting each other. So then we got Thunderball. Ooh, lots of ones. Normal action. Press one for one player. Two for two. Three for three. Four for four. Slow motion action. Press five for one. Six for two. Seven for three. Eight for four. It's, it sounds like I'm like ordering um my lotto tickets. Yeah, I can get Powerball straight, double box. Okay, so I'm just gonna press one because that's obviously where it's going. It's pinball. Some of these use the wrong controller. Look at the size of that ball. Oh, okay. All I need is just, what's this do? Oh, look, I can move my paddles left and right. Why, I have no idea. If I pull down it, okay, if I pull down Oh, uh, look at me rack up the points here. I don't even know what I'm doing, but look at me go. I'm like, no, I missed it. 
But say, okay, so if I pull down, it shoots the ball out. Then pushing the button makes it do it. And then I guess side to side is my tilt. See, I'm moving my controls a little bit left and right. All right, so Millie plays pinball. There we go. Anywho, that's the Magnus Z. Magnus Z. Magnavox Odyssey 2 Microprocessor. In the games I have for it. I am positive there are a lot better games that were made for this. I don't even know the specs on this thing yet. I got to read up on it. But this will be in the gallery. Well, shut up, Static. This is going to be in the retro game gallery. And hopefully if anybody's in the East Palestine, Ohio area, once we open up, probably in January, stop by. Play some video games. It'll be free. Say hi to me. I'll make you some coffee. There we go. Be sure to like and subscribe now. I already asked you once. Have a good day. Right, now that I'm done, I'm back out here. I've set this one up and I've actually plugged it into the TV behind me. It's had a nice long cable on it. So let's just see. I'm gonna put Casey Munchkin in and let's just see if it works. What the screen looks like. Come on, did my TV go to sleep? This TV likes to shut itself off. Let's try this again. All right, so now I'm back out here in the studio, and I've taken the Odyssey, and I've connected it up to my TV back there, and I'm going to, I don't know why it shut itself off like that. It says no signal. Let's turn it on again. Let's try this again. Really? It does this the other one, too. Is this thing broken? It only works for a few minutes and shuts off? What's up with that? Yeah, just a moment ago it was saying select game. And now it says nothing. This is awkwardly strange. Is this one actually bad? Works and then shuts off? Who knows? Let's see. I'm going to pause this and try something else. 